get ready for it. At the protective barrier, Mo Fan runs to the record room where he meets Inspector Pan. She hugs him and tells him she is glad that he is alive. He tells her that although the journey there was stressful, he found his way there. He tells her he is looking for his father and sister and asks if there is a list of the survivors who have entered into the protective barrier. She asks him for the names of his family, and when he tells her, she checks the list but can't find their name there. At that moment, Officer Chang enters and tells Instructor Pan that he has a report. He tells her that a survivor has told them that the monsters in the city are increasing because they have dug a tunnel in the city. That is why the monster didn't come from the doors of the city, instead, they have infiltrated through the tunnels. They go to the map to check the places the monsters have appeared and if they can find the tunnels. As they check, Mo Fan remembers that during his fight at the Epigraph High School, which was the first place the tunnels appeared, he remembers the students saying Liu's sister was taken through a tunnel. He goes to meet them and says he has an idea of what has happened. He tells them that the perpetrators have been planning the attack for a long time, and it's the city that hasn't noticed. He informs them that the city hunters have found frequent attacks on cyclops, and cyclops are monsters known for digging tunnels. So the cyclops have been digging tunnels around the city for a long time. The best way for them to know the largest tunnels is to find the record of the monster attacks which were tackled by the city hunters. Officer Cheng immediately calls the city hunters to come with their records. The captain comes with Xiaok and they ask Mo Fan how he has known that there were frequent attacks by Cyclops. Instructor Pan finds out Mo Fan has also been part of the City Hunters, and she is amazed by his skills. The City Hunters check their records, and they see that the most suspicious place the Cyclops have appeared for the past few days was the Epigraph Girls' School. Officer Cheng says he has to form a special team with the City Hunters, and they will make it their sole duty to destroy the tunnels and ensure the monsters stop increasing. Mo Fan leaves the office, but he keeps thinking about his family. He goes to the field and checks around for his family, and suddenly, Mo Jia Zing calls his name. He runs to hug his father, who says he was saved by a female watchman. He knows it's Liu Yuxin, so he asks his father where Liu Yuxin is. He meets his former colleagues at the City Hunters, and they tell him they are the ones who have coincidentally found his father, unfortunately. They found Liu Yuxin dead. She has sacrificed herself to protect his father and she told herself that it's unfortunate that she couldn't find Zia Zin. Mo Fan feels since Zia Zin is crippled, there is no way she can survive so far, so she must have hidden herself at a part near to the school. He claims he must save her. The special team created by Officer Cheng gets into action. They walk towards their truck, and the students of Sky High Magic Academy wonder if some people are going outside to risk their lives after surviving and entering the protective barrier. To their shock, they see Mo Fan run towards them. Mo Fan goes to tell the special team that he would like to follow them so he can find his sister. His classmates run to him. They ask him where he is going and remind him what it costs them for them to get there alive. They tell him he is still injured and he shouldn't take more risk. His father also comes to meet him, and he tells him that he knows how much he loves Xin Zia. But in situations like that, it is better he cares for himself first, as Xin Zia may also be dead already. Mo Fan claims he has never disappointed Xin Zia, and he won't do that now. He claims that if there is a probability that Xin Zia can still be alive, he will go and explore the probability. Officer Cheng tells him that he has done them a favor before so they can take him along, but it's not their duty to save his sister. He tells them he knows and that he won't be a burden. Meanwhile, at the hideout Xin Zia is, she meets a girl who is compassionate towards her. The people with her claim they can't keep staying there waiting for a savior, and they have to get out and find the protective barrier. One of them says he is a pipeline worker, and he knows underground pipelines that they can take around the city, and the monsters won't find them. The others accept the advice, and they all set out to leave. A girl tells them Zia Zin can't walk and that they should please carry her, but they refuse to do so. She offers to carry Zia Zin but refuses and says she should rather help her deliver a message. She gives the girl her bangles and asks her to give Mo Fan and tell Mo Fan she is dead. After the girl leaves, she goes to find a sharp knife to kill herself. On the other hand, Mo Fan arrives at the school and hopes that she is still alive. They get to the environment of the Epitaph Girls High School, and their car stops. Officer Cheng tells them that they have to stay far away so they won't call the monster's attention. He acknowledges that if the monster attacks them in the car, it's death for them. They all come down from the car, and he reminds them that their duty is to destroy the route which the monsters are passing to their city and they don't have any responsibility to save anyone. Their wind mage comes out, and he tells them he will forge ahead with his wind power to find out if there is any risk on their way. 
he uses his wind magic, haste to fly ahead, and on his way, he is confronted by three cyclops. Mo Fan thinks that's terrible, but Officer Cheng says it's an easy one of their mage. The mage uses his floating magic to throw away the monsters, and Mo Fan is shocked that there can be a wind mage with that much power and ability. They continue their journey, and they confront some one-eyed wolf. Officer Cheng used his ice magic crushing bow, and he destroys the three monsters in one attack. Mo Fan is shocked, he acknowledges that the talent isn't a normal one, and he asks his captain if that is what it means to use the star chat. His captain tells him Officer Cheng is a nebula mage, and he has left the normal level, and the skill he had used was to first silence the monsters so they won't scream and call the attention of their colleagues before he destroyed them. The skill is an immediate skill at the nebula level, and not anyone can get there. Mo Fan asks if there are levels in the star chat just like the normal magic, and his captain explains further that the star chat also has three levels. Seeing how strong the attack was, Mo Fan can't but wish to have the same power. He imagines himself training with the star chat, and he tells his colleagues that he wishes to get to that stage early, but it seems like he is meeting a hindrance on his way. His captain explains that when the mages are about to reach the apex level, their growth gets slower. When he eventually breaks through the nebula level, it will get easier, but it's also too difficult to use the star chat chant as fast as possible. Mo Fan remembers the book Tang Yu has given him and says the book will enable him to get it done faster. They continue their journey, and they overhear a man screaming for help. One of the mages attempts to go there and help, but Officer Cheng stops her. He reminds her of their sole mission and tells her that no one among them is allowed to even save a family member, and the only one with that permission is Mo Fan. Mo Fan considers going to help the man alone but changes his mind. He continues with them until they see another man running towards them. The man dies in front of them, and they see the sewer passage which the team that left Zia Zin have passed. Officer Cheng says that the sewer was the lodge for Cyclops, and passing the sewer was more risky for them, so they all died in the process. As Mo Fan is about to move on, he sees the bracelet he has given Zia Zin with the girl she gave him. He goes nearer, trying to confirm if the corpse he sees is that of his sister, but when he sees that it isn't her, he wonders if the bracelet couldn't be hers. He considers that the bracelet is a rare one, and that's why she picked it. He checks it again, confirming that it belongs to Zia Zin. Inspector Pan comes to him. She asks if that's Zia Zin, and he says no. Officer Cheng tells him that his men have checked the sewer, and his sister isn't there, so his sister will still be at the supermarket. They tell him they are proceeding to the school and must part ways. Zia Zin encounters monsters in the supermarket, so she hides inside one of the shelves for safety. Her brother runs to the supermarket, and he overhears the mages wondering why the other men didn't take Zia Zin along. His captain tells them Zia Zin is disabled and there is no way she could pass the sewer, which means she was abandoned by the team. They hope that she wouldn't give up on life before Mo Fan gets there. On a rooftop around, two men stand there looking at the city and one of them is a masked man. His partner tells him that he is glad the city is getting destroyed, and he doesn't know why the Archdeacon wants them to stand there and watch the city get destroyed. They remind each other that their sole aim is to ensure no one stops their plan, and they see Officer Cheng's team. The new make man says the team is going to block the pipelines, but they are going to die, so they should watch the team get destroyed by monsters first before they join the fight. Suddenly, they see the purple color of a thunder mage. The masked man immediately recognizes the thunder mage as Mo Fan and says he has an initial issue with Mo Fan and he will settle it on his own. He goes to fight Mo Fan and first sends a pet at him. Mo Fan evades the pet and finds the masked man behind him. The masked man says he knows him and asks if Mo Fan can no longer recognize him. Mo Fan recognizes the voice as Yuang. He removes his mask and shows his half-destroyed face. He tells Mo Fan that Master Mu has been maltreating him since he was a child, but he accepts all of those with the aim that he will get the spring water for the Black Curia and get his promotion. At that point, when his efforts should yield, Mo Fan destroys it all, and as a result, the Black Curia punishes him by destroying half of his face so he will ensure Mo Fan dies. He calls some pets at Mo Fan, and Mo Fan is surrounded. He keeps fighting them and running to find Zia Zin. Also, Yu Ang's partner calls him to say that the bosses want them to fight Officer Cheng's team, so Yu Ang leaves, but his monsters remain with Mo Fan. Mo Fan is surrounded, so he runs to a part of the supermarket to evade them. He feels the only way he can fight them is to use star chat magic, and when he turns, he sees he is in the CCTV room. He checks the cameras and sees Zia Zin alive. He sits there and watches Zia Zin freezing in the refrigerator she is hiding. He tries to speak to her, but there is no way she can hear him, and she also feels she will die soon. 
he hears banging sounds by the door, and it is no other thing than the monsters Yuang has released to kill him. He doesn't know what to do. If he remains in that room, he will die, and Xia Xin will also die. But if he goes outside, the result will most likely be the same, and everyone will eventually die again. He decides to give up, but he remembers his instructor's words about the Cyclops. He remembered that the Cyclops don't have good eyesight, they don't see well, and they only infer where their target is through body heat. And that's the reason Xia Xin has stayed in the refrigerator so the Cyclops won't feel her body heat and attack her. Yet, she is dying of cold. He feels challenged that if his sister, who is disabled and can't walk well, can go through all these just because she wants to survive, then it is a shame if he gives up and doesn't save her. He looks at the door and threatens that if any of those monsters succeed in breaking through the door, it will be their doom and not him. He acknowledges that the only way he can win is if he breaks through the star chart magic, and he doesn't know that his pendant is already glowing. He tries to connect the 49 stars of the star chart magic together. He goes into the magic realm, and that's when he notices his pendant glowing. He wonders if it's because of the spring water he has drank and if the magic egg has found its way to that water and has drank it. He sees his pendant evolving, and he immediately remembers Tang Yu's words about how to activate the star chart magic. He brings out the chart she had given him, and he activates his star chart fire magic. His body gets filled with fire, and when the monsters open the door, they see his fire atmosphere, and they try to step back, but he insists they have to taste his fire for what they have done to him. He throws his fiery fist at them, and they die. He comes out and sees two of the monsters attempting to run, and he sends his fire at them. Inside the supermarket, Zia Zin feels too cold, so she comes out of the refrigerator. She rolls to another side and anticipates any of the monsters who first come at her. When the first monster attacks her, she stabs his eyes, and when he can't see, his colleagues eat him. While they feast on their colleagues, Zia Zin rolls under the shelves waiting for death, but she sees a fire fry the monster. Mo Fan bends to talk to her, but she calls his name and collapses. He tries to wake her up, but she feels too cold, so he activates his fire to keep her warm. When she eventually opens her eyes, she is glad to see him. She says she has thought she will never see him again, but he tells her he will never leave her. He brings out her bracelet, and she wonders how he had gotten it. He asks her if she remembers the words he told her when he bought her that bracelet, and she says he had said that the bracelet represented how much she means to him. He repeats the same statement and tells her he will be with her all the way, and that he will never leave her alone. He carries her out of the supermarket, and on their way, she realizes that most of the monsters are running from him. She asks him why, and he tells her it's because they know he will kill them. She has if he has broken through his star chart magic, so he narrates how the book Tang Yu gave him has helped him. As a result, the slave level monsters can't attack him, but the commander levels are still difficult for him. They sit to talk, and she tells him she thinks the girl that went missing in her school wasn't actually missing. She tells him that on the day she went missing, she saw the girl with a man that had a weird smell, and when the disaster started, she smelt the same scent again. He asks if it's the smell of swamp, and she says yes. He tells her it's the black curia, and the young girl may have found out about their passage which is why they kidnapped and killed her. He asks if she knows any passage around her school, and she admits to seeing one. He says he will send her to the protective barrier, and he feels very weak. She notices he has an injury, so she uses her magic to heal him. He is so excited that his sister is now the only healing mage in the Bow City. She tells him that if the Black Curia knows about the passages, then they will have sent some people to protect it. He remembers he has met Yuang too. He takes her to a bike and says he will send her to the barrier while he tries to break the passage. He claims he can't allow the city he has grown up and get destroyed that way, so she should allow him. She also shares the same opinion as him, and she decides to follow him as he does his duty so she can heal him if he gets injured. Officer Cheng and his team continue with their plans, and when they get to the Epigraph High School, they eventually see the portal where the monsters are trooping in from. They see a little girl who has run towards the portal and then save the girl. The girl runs to the captain, who asks Xiaok to take care of her while the other people get into the business of sealing the portal. Officer Zheng encourages his team. He tells them that he knows they are all tired, but their sole aim is to protect Bo City, and it can only be done if they can seal the portal. He commands his team to activate all of their magics, from the earth mages to the wind mages to the water mages and the fire mages. They combine their powers together and they create a big brick which seals the hole. Just as they relax, they see that the monsters are struggling to come out of the hole again. The monsters push the bricks away, and they find their way out of the hole. At that point, Yuang and his partner keep looking. 
His partner says that he knows the men can't defeat those monsters completely, and there is not much they can do. But Yuang says that regardless of that, he is going to kill them completely. He tells his partner that if he is a coward, then he should stay. But if he is as strong as he thinks he is, he should follow him. The man refuses to be a coward, and he runs after Yuang. On the other hand, Jiang Kong and his armies arrive in the presence of the Terralicus. His subordinate tells him that the Terralicus isn't coming at them, and he is sending his lower-level monsters. Jiang Kong informs them that high-level demons are intelligent beings. He won't attack them unless he is sure his subordinates can't do the job. The team feels that the fact that the portal at the Epigraph High School is still open and more monsters can trip in, and it may be impossible for them to defeat the lower-level demons, but Jiang Kong says he doesn't care. He will do all he can to ensure his city doesn't get destroyed, and that's the most important thing to him. He calls for the slave-level monsters, and as they run to them, one of his mages comes to meet him. He tells him they won't allow him to fight slave-level monsters. They remind him that he is the only one strong enough to confront a Terralicus, so he should hold his strength till then. They motivate each other that they are dying for their city and living for it. They will also ensure they do all they may to ensure the city is protected so they go ahead to fight. The monsters in the hole break through, and before the team can fight them, Yuang appears with his partner. They confront the team, and the captain says he feels he knows Yuang. Yuang removes his mask and reveals his face. He tells them he will let them go if they surrender to the Black Curia, but they call him an ingrate reminding him of how much Master Mu took care of him. They start the fight, and Yuang's partner gets tired and leaves Yuang to it, and Yuang eventually runs off too. Despite Zia Zin's resolution to follow Mo Fan, Mo Fan starts driving her to the protective barrier. He says he won't allow her to kill herself, but on their way, they are confronted by a thorn-faced wolf. They succeed in evading the wolf, and they go into hiding. While the hide, Zia Zin says she has never had an opportunity to fight for herself or anyone, and he also tells her that during the disaster, he realized how she felt helpless most times because that is how he had felt during those period too. The slave-level monsters attacks and kill Jiang Kong's army. He looks at his people as they die, and if they anger, he confronts the Terralicus. The Terralicus flies to a high level, and Jiang Kong follows him. When he settles, he releases fire at Jiang Kong, and although he gets destabilized at first, he recovers and comes back with a zodiac-level fire, the highest level of fire in the city, to destroy the Terralicus. Mo Fan and Zia Zin determine to save their city. As they ride to the school, they see the zodiac-level fire, and Mo Fan knows it's Jiang Kong. He tells Zia Zin that the best way they can help is to destroy the portal. At the portal, a thorn-faces wolf comes out of the hole. All the mages are scared and afraid, and they give up on the fight. But Mo Fan arrives and he walks to the front of the monster. He says that's his childhood city, and he won't allow them to destroy it. He seals the monster inside the portal and covers it completely with his fire. Everyone looking at him realizes he has gotten to star chart magic. The portal has been sealed, the Terralicus is dead, and Yuang watches how powerful Mo Fan is and says even if he doesn't kill Mo Fan, he will ensure he destroys Mo Fan with the